I'm Mike and today I want to talk about one of the most common diseases for women, one that I rarely hear people talk about and basically never hear guys talk about. I don't even know if most guys know what it is. So I'm going to break out of my confined man box and talk about it. What disease? What disease am I talking about? I'm talking about endometriosis. Yeah, I know it sounds complicated, which is why some people just call it endo. And this video is going to break it down into simple terminology and use some graphics that even squeamish people can handle. We're also going to cover how diet has helped many women with their endometriosis, in some cases even reversing it, and also the research as to how that's even possible. Okay, seriously, you need to know about this disease because as this study mentions, approximately 1 in 10 women on the planet have it. And though many sources say a bit lower, some sources like this one say that it's up to 15% of reproductive age women. That's two or three times more prevalent than diabetes, and I can bet that you know more about diabetes than endometriosis, am I right? Am I right? And I think because it's a reproductive disease, we're all like, I don't need to know about that. We don't need to talk about that. But that ends now. I'm going to bust right through that barrier. You're like, okay, Mike, what, seriously, what are you even talking about? What is this disease? What is endometriosis? Let's get right into it. To break it down, endo means inner, meter refers to womb, and osis is a disease or abnormality, so it's an inner womb abnormality. Simply put, it's when the endometrium, or inner lining of the uterus, which women shed, every month makes its way out of the uterus into places where it shouldn't be. The most accepted theory for how this happens is that when the endometrium is shed, instead of going down like it's supposed to, it goes up the fallopian tube and makes its way out into the pelvic cavity. It will then anchor itself and set up shop, often adhering to other organs such as your bladder or your intestines. In fact, it is believed that many women that are diagnosed with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, actually have endometriosis around their intestines. And the main hallmark of endometriosis is pelvic pain because this out of place tissue also sheds every month. But since endometriosis tends to be on and around your reproductive organs, it's no wonder that it is a major cause of infertility. As this study mentions, 25 to 50% of women with endometriosis are infertile. And as this paper states, endometriosis affects up to 50% of women with infertility. So this is serious stuff that we should all be aware of. And moving on, the proliferation of the endometrium is triggered by estrogen. The thickness is dependent on estrogen. That means that excess estrogen will not only make it thicker, but could encourage it to grow uncontrollably in places where it shouldn't be. So as this study understandably mentions, prolonged exposure to exogenous estrogens, estrogens that aren't made by your body and come from the environment, is associated with endometriosis. And this is where we move a little bit into diet. As this study mentions, dairy is responsible for 60 to 80% of our dietary estrogen. And Japanese women who generally consume very little dairy not only have lower levels of endometriosis, but they also have lower levels of circulating estrogen. And in case you have any doubts about whether dairy could actually have an effect, here is a study showing that drinking milk can raise your blood level of estrone, a type of estrogen, by about 20%. And it's not just the consumption of mammalian estrogens, it's also exposure to xenoestrogens, such as dioxin, which are implicated in the progression of endometriosis. Dioxin is a persistent organic pollutant, and as this study mentions, about 95% of persistent organic pollutants in the Western diet come from animal fat. And while this study measured a 40% increased odds of having endometriosis for the top third intake of cow's milk compared to the bottom third intake, it was not statistically significant, so no final answers there. But if there is any food that's linked with endometriosis, it is meat. The same study found that high consumption versus low consumption of red meat increased the odds of having endometriosis by two times. And that finding was highly statistically significant. It is endometriosis after all. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. My puns are worse than pelvic pain. Another point worth mentioning, endometriosis does increase your risk of having reproductive cancers a bit, which makes sense because they're both estrogen-driven diseases. The link between breast cancer and elevated estrogen over one's life is well established. As this study mentions, excess estrogen induces cell proliferation, which simply increases the chance of mutations, which can lead to cancer. 
And you might be thinking, what about soy? Don't those vegans just eat mounds of soy? Well, soy consumption is associated with lower levels of reproductive cancers, possibly because it blocks estrogen, that free estrogen from getting to the cancer. And recently we've discovered that estrogen is made by cancer cells, but soy phytoestrogens block that too. In addition to lower exogenous estrogen and persistent organic pollutant exposure, there are a lot of reasons that a vegan diet should help with endometriosis. There have been reports of women like Catherine Lawrence who had severe endometriosis to the point where her doctor recommended getting a hysterectomy. After a few months on a vegan diet, her doctor informed her that 95% of her endometriosis was gone. Or a woman named Paula who followed Dr. McDougall's whole food vegan diet program, who after 20 years of severe pain from endometriosis and being told that she was infertile, she was able to have normal periods and deliver a healthy child. And there's Dr. Ronald Burmeister, a gynecologist from Illinois who has treated several women with the disease with a vegan diet and gotten good results like eliminating pain. As this Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine write-up mentions, quote, one patient reported that if she deviated at all from the diet by having some dairy products or a bit of chicken, her pain came right back just as skipping one or two pills can make a prescription fail. Okay, Mr. Anecdotes, do you have any actual research? Gosh. Let's see if there's any research on actual vegans that might explain these benefits. For most people, endometriosis mostly means monthly pelvic pain. As this paper mentions, if you are a woman or teenage girl with pelvic pain, there is a 50 to 60% chance that you have endometriosis. That is crazy. And this study put reproductive aged women on a low fat vegetarian diet, which was actually a vegan diet since animal products were proscribed or not allowed. The results, the vegan diet reduced menstrual pain duration and intensity. And during the vegan diet, their hormone binding protein raised by about 20%. So any excess free floating estrogen could be mopped up more effectively. It's also worth looking at female cancers in vegans because they have some of the same mechanisms. According to the Adventist studies, vegan women had a 29% lower prevalence of reproductive cancers. The next and most obvious point ever, vegans eat more veggies. Going back to this study, the top third of green vegetable consumption versus the bottom third meant a 70% lower odds of getting endometriosis and the same comparison for fresh fruit was 40% lower. And one really interesting factor that may contribute to endometriosis is the oxidation of our lipoproteins like LDL or bad cholesterol or even HDL, good cholesterol can oxidize and do damage. So looking to this study, it's no wonder that women with endometriosis had higher levels of LDL and HDL than women without endometriosis. Vegan populations generally have very low, often ideal levels of that LDL or bad cholesterol. And one more endometriosis risk factor that I thought was super interesting, being hot. Hey babe, you're looking pretty foxy. What do you say we take a trip to the gynecologist? Yes, the scientists in this study interviewed women and then judged their attractiveness on a scale of one to five, which is just way better and more scientific than a scale of one to 10. They found that women with endometriosis were more likely to have that hourglass figure, which they believe was linked to estrogen levels. It's not that being hot gives you endometriosis, it's just that estrogen gives you both hotness and endometriosis. Moving on, as this study mentions, one major issue with endometriosis is that in addition to being under-researched and under-reported, it is also massively under-diagnosed. As this study mentions, endometriosis is often labeled as the missed disease. Get this, the average time between onset of pain and endometriosis diagnosis in the US is 12 years. That is ridiculous. We literally have millions of women walking around with pain who have no idea why. But one new tool that can not just help women detect endometriosis, but can also help give us information on the connection between it and diet, and that is a new free app made by my friends Christy and Jason called Flutter Health. The app itself is a female health tracker and endometriosis journal and could help prevent a lot of issues and could simply help you realize when it's time to go to the doctor, for instance. They are planning on adding a food log which could give insights into how meat and dairy, for example, affect pain. Here is Jason explaining it. 
Pelvic pain is a disease of inflammation. By correlating food and symptom data, we can offer evidence-based diet recommendations that can actually ease chronic pain. Once they have more data, they will then work with universities to turn that info into research. And they've just launched an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign, so feel free to go over there and help them if you can, help them get this tool into the hands of more women. And the app is free, and I don't know if you've ever made a free product, but every bit helps. Yes, Flutter Health is a company, and no, I don't make any money from mentioning them, but they did inspire me to make this video. So in summary, endometriosis is possibly the biggest disease that nobody is talking about, and it certainly ruins lives. Well, a vegan diet isn't just gonna instantly reverse everybody's endometriosis. There is a variety of good reasons to believe that it could prevent and possibly reverse some endometriosis cases from how endogenous exposure to estrogens and xenoestrogens and persistent organic pollutants is so much lower, how vegans have lower levels of LDL and increased ability to bind up free estrogen, how we have no meat consumption and higher vegetable consumption, and finally, much lower levels of female cancers, which are triggered by the same mechanism. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks especially to my wonderful Patreon supporters who actually give me life advice, like whether or not to join a network with my YouTube channel. Much appreciated, and feel free to like and subscribe and break through the taboo of not talking about this subject by sharing the video if you feel like it. That helps a lot, and also feel free to go over to that crowdfunding campaign and contribute if you are so able. I will link it after and below this video. See you next time.